What's the first thing that comes to your mind when someone says Nepal? <laughs> I can't believe it! Well, for me, it is definitely the world's highest mountain. But as it turns out, there's a whole different side to this country. A side full of shocking traditions, beautiful sights, and interesting discoveries. Yet believe it or not, this little-known part of Nepali culture doesn't hide itself in the high mountains of the north, nor in the tropical jungles of the south, but it's right in the center of it all. So buckle up, as today we will discover Kathmandu, the mysterious and historic capital of Nepal. This city, the main star of today's video, has stood in its place for over 2,000 years. Smile and wave. And with population more than one and a half million, it is the biggest metropole in the whole Himalayan mountain range. But trust me if I say it, it is not always easy to start discovering such a huge place. And so, to get the better understanding of the city, we knew that we had to get a better look of it from above. Just came out of the municipality government office and uh, sadly they don't allow me to fly a drone here. So we needed to come up with a different plan, which brings us to the start of today's adventure. And now we're just picking up a friend. This one I was getting used to, sitting out there in the sun. <laughs> <laughs> Am I getting in here? Yeah. 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 This is Damon, a wonderful travel companion and a member of our close travel family on Patreon. Since his travel plans from Canada aligned with ours, we decided to join forces and explore the magic of Kathmandu together. And now coming back to the story, like I said, we needed to find a place that offers the best view of the city. So it's morning with Damon here in Kathmandu and we're gonna take him to the airport, but not because we're tired of him. <laughs> There's actually something, something fun planned. We didn't plan it, so thank you Damon for this. It was slightly unusual arriving in an airport without any luggage and just made it to the airport. But let's be honest, the flight itself was also quite different from what we had done before. I hope it's the first and the last time that my plane goes up and lands in the same place. In no time, with a cup of average tasting airport coffee in our hands, we were on our way to board a plane that hopefully would offer us a better view of the city. Namaste. <laughs> as soon as we took flight, I felt like I knew this city much more than I did before. Some way seeing a place from above just helps me understand it better. And the first thing that popped in my head after seeing Kathmandu from above was that this city seems to be sitting in the bottom of a bowl. Although it's located on nearly 1400 meters of elevation, it is surrounded with mountains much higher than it from all four sides. And only after getting high above the city, we truly understood what it means for Kathmandu to be located in the Himalayas. We were just circling around Kathmandu a few rounds and I thought like, why are we doing this? But then from the window, you see that some mountains are just so incredibly high that we need to gain so much height before we can even go towards them. It's really quite the weird feeling looking out of your plane window and seeing mountains that tower much higher than airplanes fly. And it might sound like a cliche, but there still was something special about laying our eyes on Everest the highest mountain in the world. Well, but most importantly, now that we had seen Kathmandu from up high, it was time to start exploring on ground level. That was pretty cool. <laughs> hey, hey, it seems like uh, we're 
we're in a really small compartment. <laughs> we just grabbed a Kathmandu cap. Yes, and very well, 28. Yeah. Walt. <laughs> and now heading to the center. While walking through the older and central part of the city, it quickly comes clear that this place is full of surprises. Once I feel I need to go deeper in meditation and, and have a lot of free time, I'm going to come here and learn how to do those intricate paintings. Yeah, we came here to ask about the painting class and we had no idea that it takes five to seven days six to eight hours a day to paint something like this just those bigger paintings on the walls yeah. they take two years to make and they use the real gold and natural colors to paint it so for example this one over there cost about eighty thousand us dollars incredible just the details here i can't believe what i'm seeing you could say that around every corner smaller and bigger palaces and temples could be found. They're scattered all around Kathmandu and each of them has a story to tell. One of such stories found us by total chance. We were wandering in the famous Turbar Square and suddenly decided to walk into one of the many beautiful courtyards to get away from the city noise. But what we found there was something I hadn't even dreamed about seeing. By total accident, we ended up, up in Kumari Palace and it's one of the like weirdest places, sort of, that I've ever seen. Kumari, in Nepali Hindu religion, is a young girl who is thought to be a living goddess. They are chosen for this position at a very early age and are worshipped as manifestations of the goddess Daleju. And this until they reach womanhood, after which a next girl between the age of two and four is chosen to be a Kumari. It felt humbling and weird at the same time. And just so you know, taking pictures or video of her was not allowed. And this top window over there behind me is where we just saw Kumari. A small little girl who is thought to be goddess. Well, in the short little time we had spent in Kathmandu, we had already seen the world's highest mountain and a living goddess. But our journey through the shocking parts of Nepali culture was far from over. And next up, we made our way to what is probably the most important place for many local Hindus. This temple, they only let in people who are Hindu in their passport, so we're not getting in, but we're trying to see if we can find a viewpoint. Pashupatinah temple lies on the shores of holy Bagmati river. And this place is definitely not for the faint-hearted. On every platform here, you can see the wood have already put, been put there. There's gonna be a body burning in a few hours. So that's where Hindus cremate their dead. In local tradition, if a dead family member is washed three times with a river water and then cremated on its shores, the endless cycle of reincarnation will be broken and the lost loved one can freely enter Nirvana to enjoy the internal bliss of afterlife. On this side of the river, there's bodies burning and then Barely 10 meters, 30 feet away, are just groups of people having a picnic. One group over there, up there. They're just eating, they're doing their own thing. It's... Well, whether or not you believe in afterlife, it's a fascinating place to see. We literally spent hours here. Oh wow, that's a big cow. There are more than 500 temples in the whole complex and the area has such a different atmosphere. It's, it's, it's a different feeling seeing a body vanish into thin air because it just reminds you that nothing is permanent, that everything I wear, everything I own, that one day it's all gone. So maybe, maybe I shouldn't stress about it that much. 
and in such manner Pashupati Nah Temple almost forces everybody who visits this place to appreciate their short lives just a little bit more. Okay, there actually was one thing that seemed quite weird about this place. What makes it funny for me is that like right next to the temple already in a restricted area we got a sunrise bank. Over there it's Nepal bank so you probably go and like ask the god for your help and then come here and get the loan for your house. What do you guys think? Do people really ask for God's blessing before visiting their bank? Or is there another reason for the offices to be located here? Yet, what makes Kathmandu such an interesting location is that it is one of those rare places where many religions and cultures thrive side by side without conflict. So beside Hindu heritage, there are also many Buddhist holy places. Most of them can be identified by the tall white stupas with golden tops. Then, of course, colorful prayer flags and prayer wheels that by local belief send positive energy and prayers into the universe every time they're turned. Prayer is sent. One of such incredible Buddhist sacred sites is called Svayambhu Mahachaitya Temple. Yes, to pronounce this name correctly, it took me a good five minutes of practicing. But to make it easier for foreigners like us to remember, it is sometimes just called the Kathmandu Monkey Temple. And now we're heading to a famous monkey temple. Let's see if the name speaks for itself. The ambience of this place is truly lovely. It's located on a small hill rising out from the Kathmandu Valley and therefore offers beautiful views on the city itself. Unexpected! Look at that monkey go! Somebody just half finished the lassi and he's just drinking it, enjoying it. It's nice and sweet and milky. But what makes this place unforgettable is the beauty and harmony that almost everyone who comes here experiences. The name Monkey Temple is definitely justified. Ah, and of course, there are thousand more things that make this city such a special and unique place. From the hectic traffic, that can literally drive a newcomer crazy and is mainly dominated by motorbikes. Two, those endless messes of wires are like a characteristic of Kathmandu. This city just grew so fast that uh, the supply of power didn't catch up. And so they kept on putting new lines on there and they didn't take the old ones away. So now there's just a big mess and the old ones are actually supporting the new lines. So as you just saw, there is so much more in Nepal than just the famous mountains. And even in the capital alone, there are days worth of activities and things to see and do. But that's the last thing I just have to add, that although sights of this capital are beautiful, then its true value still lies in the local people. They are calm, understanding and welcoming by nature. Believe it or not, even after a clown like myself ripped down a few of their electrical cables by driving on a road that clearly was not meant for me. I got no idea what to do. The locals stayed calm and positive, and instead of getting angry, they decided to help us and told us not to worry about the wires. Apparently, such things just happen here. And I really hope that the family who was connected to those wires did not have to have their dinner by candlelight that evening. Friends, thank you for watching and we hope to see you back on the channel in a little bit less than a week. As next time, we will attempt to walk what is known as one of the best long distance hikes in the whole world. Until then, take care and bye. I don't even know what's falling out of the sky anymore. It's, it's not rain because it hits you differently.
and it's not snow because it doesn't stay on the ground. 